morning everybody. Welcome back. Um, today I'm going to show you how I make my snippet rolls. Um, I'm sure there's lots of tutorials out there um, and I don't know you know how much everybody's varies but this is how I do it. Um, you can either start this is uh, some fabric it's kind of like a um, a lightweight upholstery type uh, fabric that I had just a bit of off cut after um, creating my journal cover and I thought actually this would be a really nice base for a um, snippet roll and that's what I've done here but you can also use um, a strip of your muslin which is what I've done in the past and I usually try to keep them, this is about two inches wide. That's generally what I do because with the overlap, I don't like them to get really too, too wide. But it just depends on what your project calls for. You can make it as wide or as narrow as you want. Um, so here, this is just, you know, me playing around with some fabric. So you start off with a strip, and I'm just going to keep it really short this time because... Um, I would generally probably make it about 20 inches long, um, but for, for the tutorial we'll just keep it a, a really small one. And what I do is, I'll just show you another one of my drawers here. Um, when I have finished, I'm so sorry about the camera guys, when I finish a project and I've got leftover bits of fabric, I just dump it in here. Um, and then this is where I tend to pull from for the snippet rolls. I mean, some of these pieces are probably big enough like that. I, I could probably, you know, use that in another way as like a fabric tip-in or something. But within this, there's lots of little pieces like that. And I just then, um, see, I love that kind of thing for a snippet roll. It's really, but I won't use it on this one because this one I've got kind of a color scheme in mind because I'm doing some shabby chic um, fabric journals and I kind of, um, whereas most of my snippet rolls just tend to be just anything and I'll show you the difference really quickly. <coughs> Sorry, I should have had this all out. Um, <clears throat> this is my little, my little storage container where I keep um, various things when I've created it. Um, so, for example, um, this is what I've got ready so far. Um, this one I've had for a while, and that's using paper and bits of scrap. So you can see. Um, but like this one, this is just a complete mix. I don't have any lace on this yet, and I'll tell you why I've chosen to do them this way. Is because um, some of these, I I just cut them off, you know, where I want, not with those. <laughs> I would cut them off, and then I'm, I might at that point add some really nice vintage trim to it and a button. I, I've stopped doing them ahead of time because it just depends on the you know the size of the um, snippet cluster that I need so um, just this is just another one a complete mix of stuff this was some leftover um, that Tim Holtz airmail fabric and I thought well that's really cool so I'll put that in here's another one and this has got you know, this was just a leftover piece of trim that I had. I went ahead and incorporated that into that. I love the little strawberries. Um, so these are just completely random, whereas this one, I'm going to try to keep the color scheme um, very um, pastel um, for, like I said, I've got, um, uh, I've got nine fabric journal covers cut that I'm starting to work on. Um, so anyways, that's um, that's where I'm at with this at the moment. So I just started out with the strip and then 
I would just recommend, you know, finding, I don't know, that's just a little piece. That's a, I, I'm happy with the size of that, but if you, if you feel like it's too big, then just cut it down. This one I've kept together because I think that's a really nice focal point within the um, snippet roll. And what I like about these, I've never used a printed fabric before, but what I like about it, this really, I could make a ruffle with it, but I think this is a better use of it. And you, you've already got some color coming from that, so I won't completely cover it up, but um, I'll have some of this poking through, whereas if it was um, a strip of the, you know, calico fabric, I would probably cover every bit of it so that you got nice color. But um, I'm now going to move, um, I've got all my pieces kind of cut that I think I'm going to need, and I will probably have to add more to it. But at this point, I'm going to move over to the sewing machine and let you guys uh, see how I stitch these on. So I'll be right back. Okay, guys, <clears throat> there's really not a lot to this. Um, I think when you, when you first start sewing, you're really intimidated, because I was. Um, but to be honest, this is so much fun. I probably enjoy these about as much as I do anything, to be honest, because um, there's no right or wrong way, I don't think, with it. Um, what I tend to do is because I don't want these to just be straight, I want them to just really look completely random without hanging over too too much because otherwise it starts getting too wide. I just take a couple of pieces to get myself started and I'll just stitch a straight stitch across there just to hold those in place. So I'm going to do that right now and then later we're going to I'll come back and do a bit of um zigzag stitch just so you get a little bit more design to it. Now I will say I have a very basic sewing machine. If you've got, um, you know, fancy stitches, this is just going to be stunning. Um, I don't have a lot of stitches on mine, and I have ordered a free motion um, arm, but the one that came in doesn't fit my machine, and the uh, the one that I do need for this machine is out of stock at the moment. But um, and I've not used these, but apparently the free motion would make this process a lot easier because it will let you maneuver the fabric um, much easier than what I'm having to do. But this still works, so don't you know? Don't feel like you've got to have that um, attachment. So, anyways, let me just get this stitched. Now, I will say. <clears throat> If I wasn't filming this, I would be doing this all in one go because this is wasting a lot of thread the way I'm going to have to do it to show you. But that, you can see, that's holding that in place. And when you're starting out, I think that's kind of important to keep that. Um, but after you've started doing these, you will realize very quickly that you can just keep this machine um, you know, keep it all going in one flow, I think. Um, so I've just placed a couple more down. I'm just going to, I think what I'll do, guys, is just go with it, and then um, when I get halfway through, I'll stop and let you see the progress. So if you don't want to hear the machine, I would say just um, mute, mute your uh, computer at, at this point. And I'm just adding a few more pieces here and there and just try not to make it too perfect.
Uh, one thing I do try to do, guys, is I try to make sure all of the edges get stitched down um, because I don't like um, I don't like them to be flopping around. So this is why I'll get I'll get them tacked down, and then that's when I'll start coming back, and I'll even try some of the fancier stitches um, with with this tutorial. I'm just adding another little piece of uh, lace just where I feel like it, it would it needs it and uh, try to keep your nicer pieces on top because sometimes you might end up coming in and putting a couple of layers so if there's anything really nice that you want to stand out keep that for the top you know the very last Almost done guys and then I can show you where I'm at and we can decide what needs adding to it. So here I've got everything kind of tacked down. I just want to run a couple of straight stitches down so that um, it holds everything in place and then I'll stop and show you where we're at. Just uh, take a break here and I'll show you where we're at with it. Okay, I'm hoping this is going to show up. Let me shut that light off and see if that helps. Okay, so here we are. Um, I mean, I, I want to now come back and try to manipulate that a bit more so that it looks more like a free range, uh, free motion stitch, which is just, it's like a really random, and that's not easy to do with, you know, with this foot um, plate, but it can be done. I've done it before on there and it's come out okay. Um, yeah, I'm actually really happy with that because those are the colors I wanted. Um, I just now want to come back and just, like I said, I'll try, I'm going to try a different stitch on, my sh on the machine. So, um, you know, and then we'll move over to the other. I'll change the position of the camera so you can see this slightly better, but um, let me just switch over here and try something a little bit different. Okay. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, so I will just um, 
switch this back over to a straight stitch. I just want to tidy up the edges just a little bit more and then I'm going to move the camera at that point over um, and I'll show you the, the end results. So. guys I'm going to move over to the place and let you see it a little bit better be right back okay guys I'm hoping that this will give you a little bit better view of um, what we've created here try to get it as close as I can to the camera um yeah there's a few little bits of thread that I'll come back and uh, snip off. You can't really, I'll be honest, you're not really seeing the um, the decorative stitch on this. Probably, I'll be honest, I've never done one with a black thread, but now I'm intrigued to do that. So I think I'm going to turn the camera off and make one using some black thread and see if we even like that. Um, but I'm really pleased with the colors in this. It's going to suit my um, the upcoming journal I've got planned. So anyways, let me go make one using black thread. Everything will be the same. It's just I'm going to change the color and see if I like it. I don't know if I'm going to, but I'll give it a try. Be hey everybody, welcome back. Okay, so I thought, well, I'll give it a try with the black thread, right? Oh, epic fail. I don't like it. It reminds me of an EKG. I absolutely hate that. <laughs> so there you go. If you guys were ever wondering, um, because I started out with a straight stitch and I thought, ooh, I don't, it's not really uh, doing anything, you know, so I thought, well, I'll try this fancy stitch and oh my god, it so looks like you've been hooked up to a heart monitor. <laughs> so I think we've learned our lesson there. Stick with white thread. <laughs> Unless you like that look. <laughs> Unless you're going for the um, uh, the look of that. Oh, dreadful. Anyway, so there you go, guys. Um, if you've got any questions, I think it's a pretty simple thing to make. You know, I think it's just, I know for myself when I first started, I thought, oh, how, you know, and you're trying to be so careful with how you place everything. But in the end, you'll find your own little, um, you know, the way you like it and, for me, I don't like it to be too too much hanging over, but um, but you don't want it to be too precise either. So it's just you got to play around with these things. But what's great about it is when you've got little bits of scrap, just shove them into a drawer until you get enough, and you want to sit down one day. And that's what I tend to do is just um, just sit down and spend half a day. Um, I get all my strips ready and then I just cut everything up. Maybe when you're watching TV, start getting them because you'll learn what size you like to work with. I, this one is probably slightly bigger than I would normally, but I wanted to keep that um, that flower intact because I think it's a really nice focal point. And then the other thing you could do, like I said, is add some uh, paper. This one that's a little bit of the um, Tim Holtz, you know, those tiny journal cards that nobody ever knows quite what to do with. <laughs> I just started cutting those up and adding them in, and why not? You know, it's I love to mix the fabric with paper, as you guys know. That's probably one of my favorite things to do now. So um, I hope that's helped you guys. If you got any questions, just leave it in the comments below, and I'll I'll answer it as quick as I possibly can. But um, thank you guys so much for joining me today, and <clears throat> I'll be back very soon with another tutorial. Um, so yeah, you guys have a great rest of the week, and I'll see you soon. Bye.